Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now in the last episode, I added yet another method of transport to our city, rail. But not just for cargo, we had that before, this time for pedestrians as well. Now while I'd initially planned to also add ferries into the mix, the rail network just ended up taking all of my time, and after reading some of the feedback, the harsh, debilitating feedback, kept me up all night, tossing and turning. I decided... Let's just tackle it now. I wanted to make a few small adjustments to the rails themselves and also get ahead of the problem for redesigning Crown Farms, our agricultural industry. I'm happy to say both are now complete and I've got a time lapse to show you how it all came together. Let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you find me at Crown Farms, although it's looking awfully barren right now. It's a bit of a wasteland. I destroyed every building, but I kept time paused so no one even knows what's happened yet. They haven't realized that the jobs their livelihoods have been stripped from beneath them, and they'll just fall back into place, I'm sure, when all the new buildings pop up. So, starting off with this blank canvas, something I didn't show in the time-lapse. This time-lapse has a ton of cuts in it, and lots of trial and error stuff I just decided to remove. Again, for not wanting to make the episode too long. Now, if you actually join my Discord, if you want, discord.gg slash WDP in the City Skylines channel. Every now and then I post screenshots of what I'm working on before the episode's out, when I want to get various ideas or feedback from different things I'm doing, and I tried loads of different styles for the station. So if you think of the station right now as going horizontally from like left to right or right to left, I was toying with building it vertically uh, from north to south and layering several cargo terminals next to each other because I know that people do that generally when things can get really busy because if you've got tons of trains piling up, you effectively just need to open up more cargo terminals for them to use because there's just too much volume going through one. So I was trying to anticipate that, but I just couldn't make it work. So I tried all these different design ideas, creating big kind of crossroads in the railways, creating these vertical silos that all feed into one track. It's hard to explain verbally, but again, if you wanted to join my Discord, you could scroll up and you can find it, or you can search, you know, from Darren has image in City Skylines, and then you can just like see all the different things that I post there, basically. Um, but you wouldn't have to scroll far. Anyways, didn't work out, ended up just building what we have, and I've kind of glossed over it already, but effectively, we added, I added in that kind of tunnel, so that was suggested from the comments. They basically said that, hey, the train for passengers does require a road connection because garbage piles up and it has to be cleared. So that's, like, the only reason, I think. Or if it caught fire and you needed services to get there, I guess. Um, or crime, whatever it might be, you know. So that's all said and done. That's kind of tucked away. I wanted to build a station effectively how I did before, but just a bit more deliberate and refined in terms of the placement of objects, then also kind of beautify it, make it look a bit better uh, with various objects and things. So we've got a, a better track system here, I think, going along. So we have three tracks in a row, the cargo terminals on the bottom, the, you know, the farm side, the passenger terminals on the river side, and then the bypass lane, if you don't want to go to either, is actually going through the middle, which is a... Not an ideal choice, but it's just the one that I decided to make at the time, and I was kind of aware that it was a bit weird, and then I was certainly aware when it was pointed out to me in my Discord again by Ava, who just mentioned, like, if trains get backed up, then you're backing up the bypass, and they won't be able to get through. So I'm testing out using a priority road on the track itself, right? A priority track so that the others will yield and give way to that track if anyone wants to move through it. Now, if things get backed up, it'll still be a problem, but I think you'd need a lot of traffic for it to get backed up. So I'm hoping that will be okay. And if not, we can always just extend the rails further and further out. I'm not really too hemmed in for space on that side. So I think I could always do that. And that way there'd still be room for these other trains to pull, pull off uh, and pull through. So, um, hopefully no issues there, but the reason it's going through the middle and not the far side is just because I didn't want to build more land out towards the river. I just wanted to leave the terrain in place, and it just felt like I couldn't really do it any other way. Anyways, basically not talking about anything that's happening on screen. Here we are connecting up a little way out to the highway. If you didn't want to get onto the roundabout, you've got a second option here of just taking one of our larger industrial roads out. The What we've done over towards the actual... Cargo terminal is very similar to what we had before, a one-way road going past it, and then a sort of a funnel road that goes through it. That is a two-way road that goes through it. So effectively, the four lanes are still there, right? We have a four-lane industrial road. Two of them are going one way through the cargo terminal, and then two of them are going two ways through this little funnel bit. And the way I've done the lane connections should mean that if anyone's going to the cargo terminal, they all pull off that way and they don't get in each other's way. I think. It's a little experimental, but I suppose what I could do is, if it's getting bottlenecked, I just thought it would look cool as well, but if it's getting bottlenecked, we'll just keep it as a four-lane road, no big deal. There's still space there to keep it upgraded. Anyways, so in building the actual farm, here we have slaughterhouses. Lots and lots of slaughterhouses. 
effectively, they give you the best bang for your buck in terms of, well, actually, they don't give you the best bang for your buck, but it gives you the highest volume for crops in and animal products out. Uh, however, it does cost you a lot of money to run. It costs you a lot of energy energy in terms of electricity and water. Uh, but that's not really too much of a concern. We're making good money, although obviously right now it's in the negative, you know what I mean. We're obviously making money, it's fine. And uh, water and power isn't really too much of a concern. So I was like, yeah, let's let's go heavy industrial here, build a lot of slaughterhouses as we're not growing anymore. We're not in the growth phase. We don't necessarily need to play around with the cattle shed or the milking parlor. They all make animal products. And while I am a stickler for a variety, I like just seeing the different things. It really makes the place feel alive. I just couldn't justify it to myself. Now, maybe later on down the line, we'll add in a few little extra bits, throw in some milking parlors in one section, but it just seems to me to make sense to have a big, giant industrial slaughterhouse, effectively. Um, so, reposition some of the grain silos. I think I've got nine slaughterhouses, or maybe ten when I add this final one on the right side. Uh, and effectively, any gaps that I ever had, I would add in the worker barracks. It's a very thin building, uh, so it, it slots in really nicely in these little gaps that you end up with. Uh, it's just a 2x4, I think, so it's not very big at all. I was just testing out trying different materials on the ground as well and paving in the pathways and different things. You'll also see that I'm using, every now and then, the farm maintenance building, which I don't think I ever used before, but it actually cuts down on the amount of garbage accumulation that you have. And I think maybe some other things too. I'd have to read it again, but it definitely just it helps having not as many things come here to pick things up. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile. And then the farm workers barracks increases the productivity by 5% for each one you have. So I think I end up going with like seven or eight. So quite a lot, but they'd require workers, like 40 workers each. And, and what this episode is really going to be about is obtaining those workers because we're going to be in a deficit of maybe eight or 900, I think. For it. So here I've created another little, just a, trying to break it up, make things look a bit more interesting, create another little side road, but I've actually painted it with industry and then made it that agricultural industry. So regular jobs can appear here now, uh, but they will look sort of like the oil designation on the industry, right? It's not part of the DLC specifically. It's part of like the, it's like generic industry, but it looks agricultural, if that makes sense. So it's not part of the actual specialized buildings. It doesn't receive the same types of goods and stuff. Anyways, then laying out the farm bit. So what I failed to kind of explain here, because things are going so quickly, is that I've got a series of one-way roads. We have two one-way roads along the slaughterhouses and along the flour mills heading towards the sort of roundabout entrance to the farm, right? Heading towards the east for where my camera is facing right now. And then we've got all the crops on the south. Uh, and then they're facing the opposite direction in terms of their one-way road. So they're going to go to the left, feed up, and then to the right to all feed down. So hopefully everything is going in a kind of a clockwise system. Uh, I accidentally let time play. I didn't even mean to. And then it meant that none of these places had water. So I just made sure they had water. I was just testing out some of the bridge stuff. So here we are just repainting the district. Just making sure everything is nice and squeaky clean. And nice and even. I get really, um... I don't know. I'm thinking of a word that I shouldn't say. But I get really particular with, uh making those lines straight and even and not having like weird looking districts. So that's just extending the borders of the farm itself. Now we're building out the section for all the extra buildings, farm maintenance, the farmhouse main building, some car parks just for the aesthetics more than anything. Although people do end up parking there actually, which is good. Uh, some pathways so people can get around and then connecting that pathway that we had originally coming off of the bridge down onto the main road. Um, trying to think, oh yeah, just doing some of the speed now. I'm trying to think if, if I've left anything out. In terms of needing explanation. Oh yeah, well I guess just generally, you know, I've gone with flour mills because they produce a unique good flour. I've gone with slaughterhouses because they make animal products. Everything takes in crops, so that's easy enough. But I'm not missing out on anything else. There's nothing else that we can make. Uh, some people asked if I have the unique factories to combine with petroleum. And we do. I've got a clothing factory already. It's already up and over at the shoreline area. Um, now, I was thinking that I probably wouldn't have enough crops, so I wanted to double it up. And I was just gauging the space there, so I ended up building another layer here. Uh, and at the end of each one-way road, by the way, coming past the flour mills and coming past the slaughterhouses, I've got two warehouses, one holding animal products and one holding flour. So I think it's a fairly good system. I hope, you know, I've, I, I tried to think about it. I can't necessarily see anything necess you know, specifically wrong. <laughs> I'm hesitating to say all these things because you guys will always tell me when I'm doing things wrong, basically. But a series of one-way roads going clockwise, where at the beginning there's the... the grain silos so they pick up their crops and at the end there's the end product seems like a good idea to me and then they should be able to flow over towards the cargo terminal no problem so we'll see how it all shakes out when we let time play <clears throat> 
Um, but yeah, so the unique factories, every unique factory that I can build, I have built, um, that I can actually supply myself. There's a few that I could build where it's like you have to import one thing, but I don't think I can import anything. Like, one of them, I, I can't remember specifically what it is, but it would need a forestry product. So it's tempting to make a forestry industry. There's actually some terrain on the ground baked into this map that's specifically there for forestry, even if it doesn't have trees on it, which is weird. It's like baked into the ground. Uh, so you could obviously set that up there. It'd be great. Uh, it's kind of near the airport, if you know that area on this map. So it's kind of over in that direction. So that could be a, an option. And then we could get some forestry going, combine it in some other unique factories and make some unique products. Um, but for now, we've got everything we can. So just filling the place with water, making sure they all have their services. I let time play just a little bit. And um, that's basically it for Crown Farms. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the new and improved State Farms of, of Crown Farms, our agricultural powerhouse here on the outskirts of the City of Swords, providing many jobs to everybody in the suburbs and also some of the people in the high-rises as well. Why not? Now, things are looking pretty good. Obviously, there's lots of room to expand, and the main reason for that is because we haven't yet filled all the jobs. We're actually short 755 jobs right now, so the next plan is obviously to get people to move in. Now, you'll notice we're in a deficit. What's going on? Well, basically, we're losing money hand over fist right now. It was actually just when I started recording at negative 30,000. So it's getting a little bit better. It's because we're importing a lot of stuff and we haven't actually produced much yet either as we wait for various warehouses to fill up and stuff. And that's, as you can see, a backlog of traffic here. And that's totally normal. High-pitched voice, totally normal. It should be fine. It's just because time has only been playing for a little while. We're still waiting on the first cycles. Wow. Straight away, there's apparently a fire. I can't even see it, but it's apparently happening. Oh no, the small crop field is on fire. Yeah. Does the fire department have a connection? It should do. We'll see them come out in a moment. That's so... Oh, we can see it. It's starting to smoke now. It wouldn't be the beginning to an episode without a fire erupting, would it? Or at least I know it's after the time lapse, but the beginning of my episode where I really start talking and playing. Anyways, long story short... While we're waiting for these farms to turn over their first batch of crops, we're importing all the crops instead. Nothing really I can do about that other than I could have set these all to empty, I guess, at first. But either way, it feels like you just have to deal with the first initial import. Then once everything's kind of full, you produce your own stuff, everything kind of settles, and we should be making money just fine after that. In fact, we seem to be making plenty just now. Now, like I said, there is a need for about 750 jobs, but we've got a bigger problem than that if you really look at it. There's too many highly educated, which is an interesting problem to have. We've always had the inverse of that for a long time. And the yellow category, the educated category, is actually the toughest one for me to fill because you need people to kind of graduate elementary school, but not to go any further than that, just to kind of take a job from there on. Anyways, long story short, we're going to be looking to grow our population to fill the rest of these jobs. That's kind of the goal. And then to hopefully place the highly educated people into more appropriate jobs, office jobs, whatever it may be. So that's kind of the goal for today. So if we want to just have a quick look, we can have a look very quickly. Good job, Darren. On all of the different slaughterhouses. So basically, it's all slaughterhouses. we got flour mills. We have some grain silos. Then all the farms on this side. And that's effectively it. Lots of worker barracks. Some places for parking. And then they have the tunnel now so they can actually access the railway. As people had mentioned, there was an issue there. Now, I've just done something a little strange. I decided with TMPE, and I think you could do it even without that, to select this rail here in the center and actually make that a priority rail. So that is our bypass. That is the rail for people just going through. They're not hitting either station. They're just going through. And because it's in the center, it's a little finicky. And that was pointed out to me by somebody in my Discord, Ava. And he was just saying, like, uh, if these places get backed up, then your bypass line is going to stop. So I decided to make it a priority lane. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm seeing people stopping way more than I was beforehand, but I mean, I guess in theory, the people that are stopping are the ones that are not as important to kind of get through. So it shouldn't really be an issue, but I just thought it was worth kind of pointing that out. Let me know if you think that's a good idea or not. So this guy should have the priority to go first. And that seems to be the way it's working out. But it seems like they're both kind of stopping. They're not like intelligently knowing that, yeah, you could have just kept going. You didn't need to stop at all when this guy was. Anyway. That's, you know, I just thought I would mention that in case you're wondering what's going on there. I might change it. We could change it back and just see if that kind of flows better. Uh, other than that, I then have obviously this kind of rail system here. I'm sure I talked about it in the time lapse, but effectively seems to be working fine. Lots of room for additional lines. And I've seen the intercity train pull into separate platforms now, which is good. I actually saw two intercity trains hit us at the same time. I guess they were coming from both west and east. 
uh, at the same time. So kind of interesting to see that, that that does work. Okay, so let's get to it. So today we're going to be building up this area here. Prospect. I always want to call it Prospect Park, but just Prospect. So previously I had just built it with wall-to-wall -wall, um, district policy, which meant that our residential living and our office living here, sorry, not living, office workplaces are wall to wall. So they're different type of buildings, unique buildings that are really close up against each other and they have their own different effects and benefits or whatever. We're going to get rid of all that. So let's just start decommissioning it now. Uh, so effectively what I'm going to do, I'll leave the policy on actually and we'll just let time play. And I'm going to dezone the offices and dezone the residences there. Let time speed up so that we don't just immediately crash everyone out. Because what will happen if we get rid of everything at once, we had this before, is suddenly f a flood of traffic comes out of the buildings and people, and it really slows down and causes problems all over the place. Uh, so while we're waiting on that, another thing I wanted to do, I know it's getting dark, so I might shift it to daytime or just try to speed it up or something. But one thing I want to do really quickly is just get rid of all the trees that are in this area, all the way down to about right there. Just get rid of those. Because we keep having that issue where they keep popping up in between episodes, rather annoyingly. But I've just gotten in the habit now of deleting everything when I'm building in a new area, and that way all the trees that are placed are deliberately placed by me. Okay, so another part of the problem that we've been having, right, is traffic is having issues. Still, the main issue would be a lot of people are trying to get to Shoreline. A lot of business over there, a lot of um, industry, cargo, all that kind of stuff wants to get over there, and it's just a bit far from everything, uh, from the highway, etc. So I do think that Building a highway that just goes over there will alleviate that problem, the majority of it. And also having a ferry stop, like a ferry stop here and a ferry depot here, and just carrying people over around that little peninsula thing. Just bringing them over there should also make life a little easier. Now, that's kind of a long commute by water, I think. You could cut a canal straight through here. Bit strange. Probably will just go around it, leave it be, and see how we get on. And also, there'll be cargo terminals and stuff over there, so it'll make sense to do that. Okay, so... Uh, let's have a look. How do we want to start this? Well, we still need to remove some of these houses, so we can start to just dezone this area and this area, and then just start piecemeal getting rid of maybe a line or two, and then redesigning some of the roads. All right, so all these people are going to be forced out. We have 35, let's say 36,000 we were roughly at. We want to try and build that number back up by the end of this episode if we can. And I guess we'll just get a bit more liberal with it and say, see you later. All right. So if you're wondering what these buildings are, we basically have a public library, we have a high school, and then we have a tram running through this small track here. And I was having a little look around about what I wanted to do to this area. Effectively, we've got problems here. You know, people can be pointing it out in the comments. The metro is looking a little squirrely right now, right? It's going around in a really weird way. People don't like that. Um, <laughs> I thought it was fine because I didn't think the journey time was really that long, to be honest, but it isn't ideal. Uh, so obviously we want to redesign that. Now that we've got lots of money in the bank, that's now it's the time to get a bit more liberal with these things and actually, or not liberal, but plan it out a, a bit more ahead. Uh, whereas before, it was more about getting to the point where we had the money. Whereas now we have the money, we can choose to invest it into the transport infrastructure and make more permanent decisions. All right, so we have an intercity bus station here as well, which I think will be better served closer to the transport hub here, the train station hub. So I'm going to move that to here. I'm going to move the car park stations just really quickly. Car parks. And then we're going to pop this in here, lengthways, because it just happens to fit. So I was like, yeah, this seems like a good spot for it. And this is a bit of a hub area in a way. We can maybe shift the car parks just along here, just for now. Don't know if we need them, really. Actually, I'll tell you what, one of them can go on this side. Now, let's just check the time of day. I'd like it to get a bit brighter. It's 6 a.m. Oh, so it's going to start getting brighter now, pretty much. Nighttime does fly by quite quickly. Okay, so that is just an intercity bus terminal. What's the problem here? We have electricity. We must have just cut them off from power somehow. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's just bring power. I'm just going to change that music real quick, sorry. Let's just bring power across the way here. Oh, there's a fire watchtower there. I didn't know what was blocking me. All right, that should be fine. And is that connected? Yeah. All right, that should connect us back up in a moment. And we can get started properly now. Alrighty, so I was looking through what I was thinking for this area, although I haven't fully thought of how I'm going to design it out, this area here, I want it to be a sort of a transport link 
right? So probably not many offices, commercial or residential, not much zoning, but probably more unique buildings, parks and cut throughs and things for people to make their changes. Uh, because it's a place where there's a lot of trams are stopping here and it's getting very busy. And I've got a few ideas about how to redesign the metro system, but that's not going to happen just today. It's going to be very finicky, so I feel like that'll be also a time lapse. Um, but again, I appreciate any suggestions with that. What I'm probably going to do is zoom out, have a look around, where should different stops go, and then find out an elegant way to hopefully link them. At least I'll try. Okay, but for this area, it should be pretty, pretty straightforward. So, let's just get moving these things. I don't want to let time stop. Actually, it's fine. I'll just move these away for a moment. And I guess I'll have to stop time if I'm going to delete the power, actually. So, let's just do that. I'll tell you what, we'll cheat a little bit. We'll just make it a little bit brighter on us so we can see what we're doing. <laughs> it's more for you guys, really. Okay. So, let's see. Ah, yeah. I was just trying to remember what I had planned. So, the plan... Let's just move that tram out of the way. The plan, effectively, is to build one of these little link stations here. So, we're just going to get rid of this road just to that point. We're going to go into our transport section, the link category. So... Well, it says hubs, so where two things are meeting, two or more. And the metro tram hub with road, I thought would be a nice one to pop down here. So instead of all the traffic piling up down this way, with loads of people making exchanges and multiple tram stops running over each other, I thought this building would be a better service for it. Now, it's not a huge one, but it should work, I think. At least be worth a shot. Okay, and then we'll link this back in. So it is a thinner road that we're bringing up to it, I guess, but it should be okay. I like that I tried changing the music and the same song just came on. Okay. Now, how's the zoning on that? Yeah, it's okay. All right, cool. So now we have a metro to tram hub with a road. So the metro is running underneath this, but it's running vertically. Now, I did play around before in between episodes planning this out, thinking about where this could go, and I'm happy with it running vertically for now. Uh, but it's not going to connect to our existing network for a while. It's just a, it's kind of a future-proofing thing, right? Things will run this way later. It's such a shame that you can't change its height or change its angle. It's just baked into the building where it is is where it is. So that's just the way it's going to have to be. But it's a cool building, right? It's just a little, um, it's got crosswalks built into it. It obviously is a place where the trams run alongside. And then people just go downstairs and get the metro wherever they need to go. Now we're going to bring back the high school. Back to this area here. And I was hoping to really shift it along the edge as much as possible. And we'll bring back the public library back down here. We want that down here because it's going to be affecting the education value of all the residents in that area in Robin Heights. So it leaves us with a little bit of a gap. Um, and we need to reorganize these roads a little bit. So we check our zoning. I want to compress the area a little bit. I'll make sure our roads are straight and we have the normal values on. And we'll just bring this straight down. Bonk. And just bring this back out. Oh, no. All right. So let's just bring it to there. I can chop away that bit in a moment. So, again, very grid-like, but it should serve its purpose well. Now, to close this gap here, I guess maybe something like this. Bring it straight over like so, and then we can maybe bring in the high school just to bring it right up to the edge. So just holding Alt and the arrow keys, just bring it right over and come down a bit. And then we have this nice sort of, so it's obviously a high school. We've got like this area here where people can kind of lounge around maybe. You can put trees in there. We might do that in a moment, but just for now, we'll just fill this in to make it look a bit more seamless, a bit more deliberate. And there we go. So that's given us nice space around the back and around the side to add different things in. Uh, so, what could we add? Basketball court or tennis court? One or the other would be nice. Me thinks. Always like having those in. Just trying to think. I guess we could do it this way. Really see an issue with that. And then, around the back, we could possibly go with some tourism and leisure things. Actually, I've got a different idea. Hang on. Let's bring it this way. Yeah. We'll go for tourism and leisure, and I like the sidewalk cafe. So a little cafe that kids from school can go to during lunch or whatever. Make it the modern version because it does match that building right there. And we're left with a tiny little gap, which I don't think I need to do this, but I think just because it fits the taxi rank. So the taxi rank can go there. 
again, we have taxi depots in the city. They're actually maxed out for budget, so it's as many as taxis as we can field. They seem to be always out there. They're never waiting at these places, so I think they're always busy. So maybe we just need more depots. Um, but definitely just more investments into public transport is definitely needed as well. So it's obviously private transport to an extent. Um, okay, so around the back of this, uh, there's the plaza for... It's like ice cream and food trucks and stuff like that. That could be nice. Is it in the pedestrian area one? Yeah, I'm not actually sure where it is. Let's just type in food truck. This is the one. Small food truck plaza. Bonk. So again, some benches are baked in. We got some food trucks, things like that. And then in the same category, although I can't remember where this category is right now. Oh, there it was right there. I think in the same category, statue plaza. That'd be good. That doesn't fit. What about this one? Small fountain. Yeah. So then a little bit, you know, I, th I think the school, I know it's a high school, but it's kind of artsy. So having a little statue in there, maybe that's where the staff can go and smoke or whatever. I think I said that in a previous episode as well, actually. A lot of people can hang out there and vandalize it. Um, right. Turn off our grid. Maybe just build a little pathway in between. Not that it really needs it, but just to aesthetically kind of clean it up. Maybe bring these together a bit. We do that, grab this and this, shift it over just till it blends. And then maybe on this side, just fill that in with pavement again. There we go. All right, so high school's looking good, right? We have our little tennis court. Is that tennis court? Yeah, tennis court. We have food truck, picnic tables, little cafe for people to go into, taxi rank in case they uh, want to go home. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just like a little statue plaza thing. Then across from that, we have our public library. All right, so to add to it, car park. Love my car parks. So stick one right there, fits quite nicely. Let's chop away this bit of the road. What else could we do? Prospects. Mm, yeah, a little unorthodox maybe, but let's bring this down and try to join it on somewhere down here that be good I know it's quite close there but this shouldn't be too busy generally speaking so we'll see how that see how that does for us if it doesn't do well we'll just cut it away so the plan I have then for oh and just something really quickly if you want to let time continue let's open up our trams again grab a stop and we'll just grab this stop and move it up drag the stop to move it so bring it into that hub building now. So that's reconnected. We should be good now. Just let that flow. So that, that's just going to operate as it did before, effectively. The stop was outside the library. Now it's just a little further up. Um, so we won't see too much of a change until we start really redesigning the routes. But not that won't come until a little later. Okay, so she's loving the new parks. Or he is, Edward Clark. Um, so while we're here, let's not dilly-dally and get ourselves a little pathway. Little pathway, turn off the grid, bring it through this little gap if we can. Oh my god, yes. Just about. Right along there. So we can bypass that if we want to. And we can reshape it in a moment. I was thinking maybe bring this along here. And just connect it in. Now it's not quite where I wanted it to be, so we can always just shift these over again. I want it to be central to the parking bay thing. Although I guess, I don't know, I suppose that doesn't quite make sense. It's not like cars are going to be driving this, but it just seems to aesthetically make sense. Hey, we got cars in there already. Looking good. Okay. Uh, I suppose this would make maybe more sense if it came over and bordered the thing. The built-in pavement. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Public library now has a back passage, as it were. <laughs> okay, so now to continue on from that, I think it would be nice to go with the nature trail. Nature reserve path with decorations. Decorations. We're going to go with the free form for this. No grid. No need, No grid necessary. I'm going to build a nice little nature trail for these guys. Let's undo that a little bit. Nice. Alright, so we've got a little way to cut through the city. We're going to make this like a little park. 
Uh, and then we want to branch it off every now and then. Okay. Where else could we branch this off? Maybe about here. Subject to a little bit of change, of course. But, uh, yeah, pretty happy with just doing little, little cut-throughs, little ways out. Distance too short, yeah. Maybe just shift that over a little bit. It does seem a bit close to the edge. Can we just... Can you just let me do it? No? There we go. Turn off node snapping and it helps. Okay. So we're looking kind of sparse, of course. We want to add in some trees and things. Just bring this out a bit further from the edge. All right. And let's just grab the trees that I used down here. That way it's kind of a Simba Park looking area. And obviously, maybe with a bit more time, you could go through this with a bit more decorations like food trucks or something. Uh, but we could just do something very quick now and put in some picnic tables maybe and some street lights. Yeah, something like that. Maybe just close these gaps. Okay, so. Let's look for, I guess, picnic table or something. Um, let me type uh, bench. Don't know if I have the one I'm in mind with the right name. It's like a circular bench. I'll type picnic. Nope. Table? There we go. This is what I was looking for. Park table set one. And yeah, I don't know. Just dot them around a little bit. Unfortunately, I don't think people use these really. But just aesthetically, it could look nice. Place for people to hang out. Then we'll just search light street lamp one, I think. Asian street light. Street lamp two, street lamp one. I'll go with two. And then we could just stick these in the middle of the tables. Not all of them, but some of them. That can give us a nice effect. Now, I think we already have streetlights on these things with the Nature Reserve Pass, so that's fine. Um, but what I might go with then is a statue. Asian Garden Decoration. Uh, rider statue. Rider die. Should it face towards the city or face... Let's have it face that way. It looks a bit strange. It's like it doesn't seem to match the lighting properly or something. Maybe we could sink it down as well. That's well, kind of cool. It's something. <laughs> All right, so it was kind of a quick and dirty job there, but you get the idea. I think it's kind of nice. It fills in the space because the zoning would have been a bit too messy on that, I think. All right, so next up, we need some pathways to break up these big blocks. So let's go with... I was thinking the liberal arts path with decorations could be kind of nice. Um, so previously, we had the path going straight through here, and I think it's a nice way to break up the office space. Just go straight through like that. And that way we only have a 3x3 three three usually for different buildings there. Then we just connect it up nearby the crosswalks. We do on the outside, maybe make it look symmetrical somewhat. Okay. So then again, similar sort of situation here. We'll just create a, a bit of a breakup of this area. And maybe bring this down. Just break it up a bit, you know? A little place for people to walk in between their place, uh, houses and things like that. I suppose... Maybe they should connect somewhat, but not be totally the same, because that would look weird. So we'll maybe come down to just, like, this point and bring it over. Ah, I've messed that one up a bit, because it took too many tiles. Just about there... Uh, that's a bit better, but we're still breaking the tile just slightly. 
Can I just shift this maybe just down a bit? Let's try that. There we go. Seem to have kept most of the zoning intact. Uh, so yeah, pretty happy with that. So if we look at it on its own, it's just like a little path with trees. Some lights and trees. You wouldn't know it's a park place. It's got benches built in. It's nice. I think it's nice anyway. So now we need to get to our zoning. So we're just going to zone pretty much all of this residential. Remember, we're doing this because we have such a lack of workers right now. Uh, residential all here. We'll go with office all there. No cut-throughs on that. I want that to be a solidified block, as it were. What else could we do for roads? Maybe a road that comes out this way somewhere. Is that a good spot? So look, junctions are a little close, but I, I'm happy enough with it. What about down here? Everything's fine. I think I'll probably do the same down here, you know, although maybe a park would actually be good here, because if I recall correctly, they they are pretty happy with the amount of parks they have, but it would be nice to just stick one somewhere down here. So I might do that as well, like an official park. Okay. What's next? I'm trying to remember everything that I had in mind. So a police station. So people have been asking me, why not add a big one, right? A police headquarters. So I had a look at the various different types of buildings. High capacity police headquarters. Police headquarters and then another variant of it here. I like this one the best. We'll pop this one right here. And a bank can go next to it. Nice and safe. Protected. Now, I love me my health benefits. We have a yoga garden, which I think would work nicely here. And a sauna. If we can find that. Throw in that sauna there on the side. Gonna go with... I think a metro station here as well for the future. Right there. Now this is the awkward thing actually because if that's going to come out to the right I don't know if I can angle this quite correctly. We're so close to being able to fit it there. It would be perfect there. Again though, probably in the future somewhere like even here would be good. And that could just like link over to it. Something like that. That would be a pretty nice bend. A nice and even bend. So maybe there would be a good place. We're not affecting anyone for noise or anything so should we do that instead? Stick it there? I think so. Just seems to make more sense. It would be nice to go there, but I just it's awkward. I don't think it would work with the one we have here. Now, you could run them at different heights. So that's always a potential. I don't think you can actually set the height to be different of the initial station, though, can you? If you can, let me know, because I'd really like to know that before I do anything with this in the next episode. Uh, so I'm going to straighten up this road. Just move this, shift this over. Shift this into the center point. Shift that over slightly, and then we'll get our tool to straighten it up. Something like that. That should help the zoning on the inside be just a little bit better. So what we'll do, when we have these little breaks here, I think adding little corner shops is kind of a nice idea. Just something like that. So it's not super oppressive to the people living there. It's more just like a little extra thing that they can, you know, use a corner shop effectively. I like the idea of that, keeping them nice and small, low density as well. All right, uh, next thing then, I guess just again, more zoning. We'll zone this area next. I think we're good to zone pretty much all of this. Uh, might think about leaving some of that, but maybe put one in there. Okay, so here we've got a gap. I was thinking hotel. So, hotel. We now have the ability to build town hostels, which have sightseeing requirement, uh, shopping requirement, and a little bit of business and a little bit of nature. So, this area is pretty good for that. At least for sightseeing. Shopping, not great. Business, kind of. And offices are going to be moving in. And then nature, not really. But, you know, I think it'd be good to get a little hostel in there. Why not? We don't have any. I was thinking, actually, as well. Although I hadn't committed to it, of building just like a couple down this way. One or two or three. Don't know if it's a bad idea stacking this many hotels next to each other. But it's across from offices, shopping, and a few different things. So it seemed like, oh my, yeah, see, that's great. And it just needs a bit of nature. So it'd be interesting to build maybe just, again, fill this area in with like almost like a park. And uh, maybe then they'd have the everything they need. So try that there, a few hostels. Uh, the reason I'm putting them together is just because I think they work well together, you know? It's like three in a row. This one, is, if anything, is a little odd because it's just standing up on its own. It's a bit strange. All right, should we let time play? I think it's about time we see if people move in to our new found area. 
How's the electricity situation? Oh yeah, just realized as well. One thing... Oh, we've got pretty much piping everywhere. And the electricity's been sort of severed until people move back in. So maybe if we just let time play enough, we won't need to do anything else. <laughs> Yeah, they've just gotten connections already. Sweet. All right, so there we go. So that's the plan. That's one of the plans anyway, right? So the idea is to, again, actually here, get rid of that building because it's suffering anyway. But again, just have more metro stations in the future. I'm going to be looking out for places to place these. So a metro station across from the university makes sense to me, especially since that place is going to be abandoned anyway. But again, the issue that I find myself having is that they're all pointing in different directions. So it's a little tricky. So they'll have to run separate lines, I think. Uh, and then look for places where they can converge, right? So there's this building, the large underground metro station, which has a sort of a cross uh, at different heights. So one of them is that the standard height seems to be 12. The other one is at height 32. So it's significantly deeper. And I tried running a track over it of 24 to meet in the middle, you know, 12, 24, 32. Um, oh, I guess it'd be 36. Actually, it might've been 36. Um, but it didn't seem to work. So yeah, not really too sure why, but uh, maybe it was 32 then actually when I'm verbalizing this Maybe that's the reason but I wasn't 100% sure at the time Anyway, just while we're waiting, uh, let's get some additional trees and details built in We go with a little bit of tree anarchy here would it be too crazy for one or two just on the edge there? I think it's kind of nice now remember, this isn't hooked up to anything yet, except for the trams rolling through as usual, so nothing too different there. Uh, something I'd be meaning to do, though, was just change up the infrastructure here a bit. We have buses running around, and the buses are just causing havoc, right? There's people waiting for buses all the time, much rather than wait for trams and uh, declutter the roads somewhat. So what I was thinking is, effectively, these are the tram roads, right? So the roads that are running trams, if you want to see it from a high-up view, has the green line on it, right? So the green, these don't have green lines, these are just bus routes. If we want the tram line, we need the green. Now the green is actually for cycling, but that's just how you can tell the differences in the roads uh, from up here. So what I'm gonna do is all of our main roads, they should all really have trams on it. That was kind of something I was avoiding because I didn't think every single road needed it. And in thinking of it more, <laughs> not every single road does. It's really just these main wide roads that should have it. These smaller individual roads that are running in between the city blocks, they don't need them. Now, some of them might have them every now and then, like the one for the university, but not all of them. And this way we should have a nice, what's the word, dynamic uh, kind of word. Can't really think of the word right now, but um, yeah, dynamic, I guess. Like if we, if the need arises to have a tram on it, we can do it, you know, that's what I mean. So let's just start laying out that infrastructure. So we have to make sure that zoning is turned on and start upgrading these. Hopefully things go okay. Alright, I've just noticed that there's trees on this. Goddamn trees, my nightmare. And yeah, I want to get rid of that bus. We're going to get rid of the bus stop completely. Because it's a bit redundant if there's going to be trams running on the same lane. <laughs> but if buses want to travel up and down maybe the smaller bits, I'm okay with that. So the bus road would be Carlo Valley. So we'll get rid of that route. That's gone now. Alright guys, but don't worry about it. You'll just have to go get your trams instead. Hey, there they go. They've given up on it. Now, something else I'd be meaning to do was just shape uh, this area a little bit. So we'll just push those back just ever so slightly. Uh, same with here. Just push those back and then we can get rid of some of the crosswalks. There's too many. Just pop them in where they make the most sense. Which I feel like is pretty much here and maybe at this joining on bit. Right, so now we just have crosswalks here. Oh, sorry, I got rid of that one by mistake. Yep, so just crosswalks at the actual hub station and then, you know, the adjoining bits as well. I wonder what the situation is with our taxis. It'd be interesting to find that out. Um, so transport, do we get to see taxis? Six per week, so not... I don't know. It doesn't seem like anyone's using them. And yet, I think they're all out, but let's find out. So the taxi terminal depot was here. Yeah, tw 23 are in use, you know, so apparently so. <laughs> now, if we have a look in transport and taxis, there's not much that came with this DLC after dark for taxis. I mean, it adds them in as 
We've increased the budget. So, oh no, we haven't. Let's uh, increase the budget for the taxis during the day and the night. See if that makes any difference. Up to 32 taxis now. So we've seen a few more roll out. Maybe we'll see them actually man the stations, as it were, the taxi depots. Uh, let's take a moment to have a look cinematically at this area and see what we've just done. So there's our little park on the outskirts. Our various buildings and corner shops are coming in now. Oh my god, I'm a freaking idiot. I totally forgot to turn off the district policies. Right, so this is all absolutely fudged. My bad. This should have been the first thing I did, and I nearly did it as the first thing, actually. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so that's fixed. So these houses are going to go away and remove. people are going to remove in. Uh, and then let's just paint Prospect all the way down this way, all the way up here, all the way across. Okay, let's just speed up time now. These are all going to go away and then come back in. Uh, and we'll just clean up the borders here a bit. So just continue this all the way up. By the way, you might be wondering, why am I building those hotels, for instance? Uh, and it's because if I want to get to the hotels that are bigger and better and more varied, we need to build up a weekly income with the hotels that we do have access to. So we just have to use what we have to work through progression to get the ones that we don't have. Um, because this is a playthrough. It's not just a watch me build a beautiful city uh, like some YouTubers do that do amazing work. I can't quite do that, so I'm playing the game instead and going through the progression, uh, which I enjoy. All right, so let's just bring that out to the edge. Let's just get rid of this bit as well. I'm so OCD with my districts. All right, so there we go, prospect. So now, um, yeah, these smaller ones are going to go away and then bigger ones are going to replace them. There's actually weirdly no demand for residential now. I'm surprised by that just because I think there's still jobs here. Yeah, there's still 500 jobs, so that should ha that should be filling up soon. And then these wall-to-wall -wall buildings, they're going to basically collapse and get rebuilt as regular offices. So I think if we just let time play a lot, we can check this out. So while we're waiting for all that, let's have a look at some policies. What can we give these guys? Uh, obviously, recreational use, education boosts, schools out. Citizens will prefer working over your education. No, we want them to go to the high school if they can. Free withy. Free Wi-Fi. Reduce mail accumulation. No, that's okay. The book fair, of course. Public libraries upkeep is increased, but it increases happiness and entertainment. For profit education, the building upkeep will be reduced, but the ha citizens won't be as happy. Um, slightly reduced garbage accumulation, slightly reduced tax income. Yeah, sure, recycle. Why the hell not? Go crazy. Taxation. City planning. Industrial space planning. High tech housing. We actually have that over in Butler. Encourage biking. No loud noise in the night. Leisure specialized areas will close for the night, reducing noise pollution. It's kind of interesting, but nah. I think we can leave it, but if anyone has any suggestions, I, I do read all my comments. I genuinely do. I've kind of stopped replying to a lot of them because I tend to just address them in the next video. Um, but I do read it through everything. Yeah, I don't get that many. If people find it hard to believe that, a, I guess, a YouTuber reads their comments. I'm a small YouTuber. I get like 40 or 50 comments. Not that much per episode you can read them in like you know 15 minutes it didn't take long at all and i want to know what people are saying um so yeah i just genuinely read them and also even on older videos this is something i should really mention in, in earlier in the series on older the way <laughs> content creators have an app called the youtube studio and it allows you to straight away actually it filters by the newest comments across all your videos so every time i open that up which is many times a day you know, I see all the latest comments, and you'd be surprised, uh, maybe, that I only get, like, I don't know, per hour, maybe 10. So not that many. So I read probably 100 comments a day, uh, just because I'm always interested. And if I was to reply to them, it would just take a long time. But I take it on board. I try to give them likes to let people know I've seen them, or hearts if I think they're really good, and other people should see them too. Uh, and every now and then, I do reply when I can. So I just thought people should know that's how it works. So if you're ever feeling like you have something to say, uh, say it, because I will see it. This is nice that some of our lights have come on in the uh, the park tables. Really, if anything, it's a bit too bright <laughs> in there. Now, this is something I'm a bit confused about. What we'll do it for now is, should this be a park area? I don't know. But we can paint one and just make it its own little park, even though it doesn't have a main gate or anything. But maybe it'll get used more frequently that way? Because right now, it's just a place for people to cut through. So, Birdsong City Park. Great name. There's actually a bit of the park on this side, so we'll just join it across. Why not? I don't know if that's weird, having it all be one, but I think it's fine. Um, 
Who's this? The park should be named after that person, whoever that is. It looks like some sort of World War I German-esque helmet to me. Now, so we'll call it Helmet. <laughs> helmet City Park, why not? We can have a naming competition in the comments for that one, because that's obviously not going to stay that way. Uh, what else? A park down here would be nice. I had this as a park before, but it wasn't too sure. Sterling? Yeah, sure, why not? Helmet. All right, how's Prospect doing? It's good. We're nearly back up to where we were at the beginning at 36,000. Money's back up again as well. How's everything down here? Let's check traffic. It's been a while. So traffic flow is 75%. Rail is moving okay, but I can see that we've got some slowdown on the rail. So I'm thinking to turn that off, that priority thing, because it seems like it's just not necessary. Doesn't seem to be an issue though, but it just seems not necessary. How many people are traveling? 13 are coming back this way. Oh, by the way, something very frustrating I've noticed is that people, instead of walking across this and just walking along here... Oh, could that be why? Is there no way to get across there? Oh, that could be why. I was wondering, because people won't use this bridge. Instead, they're walking under the tunnel and coming out. And I just find that strange. I thought they'd just walk the pathway. Um, so it might be because there's no crosswalk there. That might be the reason. <laughs> so let's pop that back in. So you guys can just walk across now. So hopefully you don't have to go through under the tunnel. I just think that looks strange. But then I was thinking of providing them a little underway, a little passage tunnel here. So let's just do that really quickly. Maybe the last thing we do in this episode. Let's give them a regular paving. And how many tiles is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty deep. Or pretty long. So go down eight meters. Hopefully that's okay. And we'll go across. Oh, that didn't work. That's weird. Didn't have this selected. That's why. So we go to eight and it says no. Space already occupied. Occupado. What? I'm so confused. Why? Yeah, that works. Okay, I must have just been clicking something wrong. My bad. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this way we match the kind of design of it. It's a little funky. I can maybe try to fix that myself. I don't know why it's done that. I actually did this initially in the time lapse. Went totally fine. Never had any issue with it. So it's just the nature of the live environment, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, weird. Maybe I made it too long or something. Can't even select that. There we go. Yeah, it shouldn't really be affecting the terrain around it like that. I don't I really just don't know why. Maybe it's going too deep or something. I don't know. Whatever. I'll try to fix it. But they should use that as well to go across if they want. Maybe. Might help. Um, but either way, it'd be interesting to see them get off the um, train next time and see where they go if they use the bridge a bit more. I just don't like seeing them use the tunnel. They don't need to use it. I'd rather. I wish I could say no pedestrians can go down there because it's weird that they do. And I'm also seeing less people using it than I saw before. I actually saw quite a few people using it uh, previously. Oh, I think I remember why. I need to tone down the amount. There's four vehicles. We only need about two. A lot of people waiting here for their tram to take them somewhere as well. And that's because a lot of people come in via intercity rail. Interesting with the comments, people said that like, open platforms are fairly common. Germany and a few other places that do that. That's because you pay as you get on the train. Interesting, I guess. Like a bus. And what I'll have to do is go through some of these places and just adjust um, traffic, time traffic lights, because I don't think they've been placed in in certain places. But when I run a few of them as tests beforehand, things are working fine. So yeah, and I need to, then obviously this is the next big project, right? Is clearing this area. This metro station is not going to be here anymore. And these trams are not going to get stopped and backed up like this. So that'll all be fixed. This is going to be a very busy spot instead now. Um, but it should be reduced, generally speaking. So that's the next big project for me is going to be a bit of a metro overhaul. But here we go. Look at this. It looks quite nice, I think. Quite happy with how this has come together. And more and more people are going to be moving in, getting educated, and then taking some of the higher education jobs and then leveling up, right? These places get leveled up the higher the education is. Uh, so once we, it just, it's only a matter of time, really, you know? 
and then they become bigger and bigger. So we got 36,000. We're kind of back where we left off. 3 million in the bank. Feeling good. We got some demand for residential. A bit of demand for everything. Our office spaces have come back in. How's our hotels doing? If you want to just quickly check those. Pretty good. Could be doing a bit better for business, I suppose. And that's because... Ah, uh, right. The business is actually over here a bit more. Well, I wouldn't mind adding in a few little places that they can uh, go to here. That might make more sense. And then we can have a little cut through or something that leads to the metro station. All right. So, yeah, I'll be interested to see what people think. I'm, I'm happy with this, though. It's much better than it was before, for sure. And then this is, like, the big question mark, how we do a bit of a hub area, a place where people make their exchanges uh, without... Yeah, because this is the... This is the real big hub area, but this has got to be a place where people do get divided up and figure out a way to get around in a better way. It's not really going to be any zoned buildings there, I don't think. And last thing to check, unemployment's at 2%. Looks good. So that tells me that we just need more people coming in, really. And very last thing, then, it's just to follow up from the beginning. How many overeducated workers here? Still too many. So that's the thing. We need more people with lower education to come in and then if i just build more office space for instance in our financial district maybe in the next episode the higher educated people will take these jobs instead and then we'll get the lower educated people to go back and fill in those ones back here so that's the plan for now let me know what you think of it all and where i'm going horribly horribly wrong as usual i also still have the plans to do up this big ferry terminal over here multiple cargo terminals offshore oil drilling oil drilling there's so much to do all right it's gonna have to be it for this episode thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one Thank you.